G'day viewers, Annie here. I put together a slideshow video about the different requirements for gold detecting in Australia, in each state and territory. This should help uh, overseas visitors, newbies to gold detecting, grey nomads, and those that travel interstate to gold detect or gold fossic. Here I've got a map that I've got from the Australian um, geoscience website that shows the various regions of Australia that have gold and also the amount of gold taken from each of those areas and the various localities in within those regions. This is a legend to the gold resources map that shows the gold occurrences and the mineral deposits with more than 1,000 tonnes of gold and also the regions that had more than 1,000 tonnes of gold. So you can see that a fair bit of mining of gold has taken place in Australia. So when you come to gold detect in Australia, one of the things you'll note is that um, the fossicking and prospecting is managed by each state and territory, so the regulations and rules all vary from state to state and can get a bit confusing. Some states and territories require a miner's right or a fossicking licence, while others don't. Whether you can camp in a state forest differs, and so on. Limits also apply to how much gold or gems can be taken by the recreational fossica and other conditions apply. So when I put this together, I just want you to note that the information I've got together here is mainly for gold detecting and I've not looked into the use of high bankers or dredges that are prohibited in some states or like activities. As a rule of thumb, in national parks in Australia, fossica and gold detecting is generally prohibited. So it's prohibited in national parks, conservation parks, fauna and timber reserves. And there are a few exceptions though in New South Wales if there is plan of management and in Victoria. Then you have the Native Title Act. So access to some of the native title lands are excluded altogether. Otherwise permission of the relevant registered native body is required. Crown land. Crown land is known as all land remaining that is not freehold title. So re Crown land is regulated by the relevant state government legislation. Some regional towns have a town common that is Crown land where no permission is required to fossick unless it is managed under the trusteeship and a good example of that is Tipperborough. Information about the ownership or status of land can be obtained from local councils or land and property management authority. Another thing you'll notice when you're researching um, is an expression unoccupied land. And uh, uh, this is mentioned in the Mining Acts, such as the Mining Act 1929 Tasmania and the Fossicken Act 1994 Queensland. And the best definition I could find of this was unoccupied land means any crown land to which the act applies and which is not in lawful possession of occupation or any person under this act. So this would indicate that you can detect on unoccupied lands. Where there are existing leases on land where there's a current mining lease or prospecting lease or the like, permission of the leaseholder should be obtained. I'd like to make a disclaimer here that this video and information was put together in March 2020 and I've taken all care to ensure that the information is current. However, viewers should check with departments within the states or territories for any updates or changes to rules, regulations and policies prior to carrying out activities. Alright, the first uh, state I'm going to tackle is Queensland and just before I do that I'll pop up a map of the Palmer River area, which is one of the uh, main gold areas in northern Queensland, and an area 
where you'll find some Cornish boilers and that and Queensland uh, was one of the main sources of gold around the Palmer area and you'll see that it, um, it comes down through Croydon, Kidston which is around near Ironsley, Mount Laishon, Twin Hills, Mount Morgan and then further down towards Gympie and even some spots around Brisbane. Alrighty, in Queensland you must apply for a fossicking license to fossick or gold detect in Queensland and you can apply for an individual or family license up to a term of one year. You can fossick for gold or gems or carry out recreational gold detecting in designated fossicking areas and areas called general permission areas or GPAs. The above link will answer all your questions relating to go, where to go to fossick, safety, rules and regulations as well as online printable maps. And fossick and licenses may be purchased online or from the mining warden's office. National parks and state forests, no fossicking is permitted in Queensland in um, national parks, no fossicking is permitted in state forests and timber reserves except in declared fossicking areas or GPAs. Private land, several pastoral stations in Queensland allow camping and prospecting for a fee and they open usually April to October to avoid the wet and extreme heat. You need the land holder's written permission to fossick or gold detect and there's a provision on the back of the fossick and licence for this to be endorsed. They may impose conditions such as fees, fill your holes, conditions for access like closure gates and everything. If more than one landholder is involved, all must give permission. Landholders may withdraw permission at any time. As regards to camping, Camping is not permitted in GPAs in state forests in Queensland. Camping is permitted in a few of the gem fields, such as sapphires and opal fields, subject to purchasing a camping permit up to three months. Camping is permitted in some national parks and state forests, and I'll put in a link to that. I've put in a snapshot of the Queensland Government website about fossicking in Queensland. It's a very informative web website. It gives you a lot of the gold districts, the fossicking districts, the opal fields and the like, and your rules and responsibilities. One of the areas I'll take as an example is Claremont in Queensland. Uh, this is a photo of the piano in the tree after the floods years ago in um, near Hood's Lagoon. Claremont is in the uh, central gold district of Queensland and there are 11 separate general permission areas or GPAs where landholders have given permission for fossicking and seven of these are in the Claremont State Forest. You'll see that the links provide maps of each of the areas and explain that camping is not permitted. Right, uh, the next state is New South Wales and here is their state flag and a map of the gold areas. Included in this map though is Canberra. Alright, in New South Wales no miners right or fossick and license is required. However, if you want to gold detect or fossick in New South Wales State Forest you must apply for a fossick and permit. And permits sometimes aren't issued during timber harvesting, firefighting or extreme weather conditions. National Parks. Fossicking is generally permitted in two national parks through their plans of management. And I've provided a link there. Hill End near Bathurst also has a gold prospecting area. A good site 
for New South Wales is uh, to look up is NAPFA or the New South Wales and ACT Prospectors and Fossickers Association Inc. They have heaps of information on there. As for camping, camping is permitted in all state forests in New South Wales except Cumberland and Strickland state forests and it's free for up to four weeks. It's not permitted in picnic areas or rest areas on the main highways. Now in New South Wales you have Tipperborough. It's an isolated small town in western New South Wales and the town common is managed by the trust. To gold detect on the town common you must firstly pay a monthly permit TJ's Roadhouse. Two cattle stations, Gumvale Station and Mount Stewart Station currently allow prospecting and camping for free. So if you inquire at the Roadhouse and the Tibberborough Hotel for more info on that. Next we have the Australian Capital Territory. I had a devil of a time trying to find any information on fossicking in the ACT. One gold detecting forum member stated he'd contacted authorities and there is no requirement for a licence to gold detect or fossick. But to access private property permission must be obtained from the owner. If anybody has any info, it would be appreciated if you make it in the comments below. Alright, the next state to be covered is Victoria. A miner's right is required to gold detect and fossick in Victoria and it's issued for a term of 10 years. Children under the age of 18 do not need a license when accompanied by an adult that has a minor's right. They have an excellent fact sheet that should answer all your questions about recreational prospecting and I will put up links to those. Where you can fossick and gold detect includes some areas in national parks in Victoria. They also have another handy link to um, Goldfields Guide and Gold Pros Prospecting in the Victorian Goldfields. Camping. Camping is permitted for free in state forests in Victoria, however visitors are requested to camp in designated camping areas. Another good uh, place to look up is the Prospectors and Miners Association of Victoria, PMAV. Uh, and they look after the rights of prospectors. If you found this presentation useful, please click on the like button below, subscribe to my channel and feel free to share it with others.